Ah, Sword Art Online. It's a series you either love or hate, or you loved it and grew to hate it. But here's the thing, it's good again, <gasps> probably. So I'm here to recapture some of that season one excitement. <laughs> So today, I'll be going over the whole SAO timeline up to the end of Ordinal Scale. And for those of you who need to hear this, there will be spoilers in this video because I'll be recapping every major plot point for the series. Obviously, it's a timeline. 2016 to 2018. I'm gonna start this timeline at a crucial point in all gamers' development when Kirito stops being a jock so he can spend more time playing video games. Like me. No, literally like me. I, I'm done. I'm no longer a D1 athlete. I just like play visual novels all day. In 2016, Kirito is eight years old and is tired of being forced to train in the martial art kendo. His grandfather goes all dance moms on him and gives him a beating for quitting. As a result, Kirito's adoptive sister, Sugua, doubles down on her own kendo training to avoid incurring their grandfather's wrath. With all that pesky athleticism out of the way, Kirito's interest in computers grows. Two years later in 2018, Kirito discovered the truth of his upbringing. His biological parents died when he was a baby. He was adopted by his aunt and uncle and Suha is actually his cousin. His aunt and uncle chose not to tell him anything about the whole being adopted thing. So when he finally does find out, he isolates himself diving deeper into the escapism of technology. 2020. In 2020, an as yet unrelated plot point, a young girl named Shino is involved in the infamous post office incident. A robber holds up the building while Shino and her mother are inside. Shino ends up shooting the robber with his own gun, displaying a hidden talent for marksmanship. Even though she took out the bad guy, she is ostracized by her peers. She's traumatized by the experience and avoids men and guns as a result of it. And given how some of the men in this series behave, who can blame her? 2021. But the whole world is about to change in 2021 with the debut of a new piece of tech called Nerve Gear. It's a revolutionary piece of VR technology which promises not only high quality graphics, but a total linkage of your nerves to the game. In other words, what every single one of us has dreamed about at least once. A man named Kayaba Akihiko developed the tech, but it was mostly funded by the US and Japanese militaries. And I'm just saying, I don't think connecting nerves in any consumer item can be good. Bro, the military can't use it. Let's give it to kids. I don't trust Google <laughs> with my credit card account. Why am I going to trust Russian, With my phone? nerves. <laughs> Beautiful. I love that. In May of 2022, Nerve Gear hits the market. For the next few months, everything is working perfectly. Well, except for the fact that a secret mode exists that prevents users from removing the Nerve Gear unless they meet a very specific set of conditions in the game. And if the wearer tries to take off the Nerve Gear by force, their brain will get fried. Luckily for Nerve Gear stockholders, no one knows about the mode. And if you're wondering why Kayaba would have such a mode in the first place, I would have no other answer for you other than it was funded by the military. It's kind of the thing they do. 2022. In August of 2022, the open beta dropped for the Nerve Gear's marquee game, Sword Art Online. Kirito's isolated himself from the real world at this point, which apparently makes him the ideal beta tester for the game, so he dives in. The whole fry your brain problem doesn't come up until November when everyone logs into SAO on its true launch day. Kirito and the rest of the players are enjoying exploring the world. Kirito soon encounters Klein, another player who needs a hand getting used to SAO's mechanics. Kirito gives him some pointers and the two begin a friendship that will span the rest of the series. Only a few hours later, players discover that there's no way to log out and they're trapped in the game. The player's in-game appearances revert back to what they look like in real life. Uh, and that can't be good. I mean, imagine seeing an anime girl and then all of a sudden, this is my face. That's scary. Like, oh, you're a black guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. But not as big as a bummer as when they're told that if they die in the game, they'll die in real life. On the first day alone, hundreds of people die trying to take their headsets off. Kaiba announces that all living players will be freed if they reach the 100th floor of Aincrad, a floating castle. Even in the month-long beta, Kirito and the other players only ever reach the 10th floor. There's one small silver lining. If players remain in town, they can't be killed. I mean, the task of reaching the 100th floor of Aincrad will probably fall to a few elite and very brave players. That same day, the Japanese government establishes a group to research and assist victims of the SAO incident, appointing Seijiro Kikuoka as its leader. One of the group's responsibilities is caring for the real world bodies of the players trapped in the game so they don't, you know, die of starvation. 
By December, over 2,000 players have died, including many of the beta testers. But the remaining players have managed to create a relatively stable society. A ton of stuff happens around this time. Most of it's in the progressive light novels if you're curious. Most importantly, Kirito meets Asuna. Later, the beta testers call a meeting, which is quickly interrupted by another player who accuses the beta testers of hoarding information about how to beat the game. Kirito takes responsibility for the beta tester's role in the accusations and labels himself a beater, which means beta tester cheater. <laughs> Wait, let me do that seriously, because that's such a terrible name. Pa, <laughs> he's a beater. <laughs> At the start of 2023, a company known as Rekt Inc. takes over management of SEO servers. Rekt happens to be Asuna's father, who clearly has a special interest in the SAO crisis. In February, Yuki Kono is the first to test the Medi Cuboid, which uses the same full dive technology as Nerve Gear. The Medi Cuboid is specially designed to give terminally ill patients a more normal life. Remember Yuki's name for later, it's gonna be important. Back in SAO, by March, the 25th floor of Ironcrad is clear, but the guild responsible for the victory is decimated and retreats. A new guild known as the Knights of the Blood forms and steps up to the plate. A player named Heathcliff, which is Kayaba in disguise, is their leader. But the guild has a ton of badass members, most notably Asuna. In April, Kirito joins a low-level guild, the Moonlit Black Cats, hiding his high level from them so they won't realize he's a beater. May brings the launch of yet another full dive system, the Amusphere. What is this? The Ouya? The Ouya? Yeah, what is that? What is, tell no, me. You don't know what the Ouya is? What is it from? It's, well, it's that gaming system that was like, we're gonna bring Android games to the big TV. Oh no, I don't know what that. I'm glad I don't. Oh, good. <laughs> terrible idea. <laughs> its biggest game, Alfheim Online, is set to debut in November. And really, I'm just confused why anyone would want to mess with the same technology that causes the deaths of thousands of people. Like, all right, thank you, capitalism. We really that pressed? Y'all really want money. <laughs> A few months later in June, Kirito's negligence gets the moonlit black cats killed. Kirito blames himself, and honestly, he should, but it only pushes him deeper into his self-isolation. And, oh, later in October, a young girl named Yuna gets killed on the front. Uh, trust me, it's important. 2024. By January of 2024, a year and a half after the whole getting trapped in the game incident happened, the 50th floor boss is cleared. Kirito unlocks his really cool dual wielding ability and a guild of literal murderers, Laughing Coffin, is formed. Back in the real world that same month, Kirito's adoptive sister, Sugaha, joins Alfheim online. On February 23rd, Kirito saves Silica, a beast tamer, from a bunch of aggressive apes in the forest. Around the same time, he meets Asuna yet again, and she starts forcing him to interact with other humans, unfortunately. Kirito duels Kuradil and wins. And he refuses to join Asuna's guild because he's too busy filling his sad boy oats. <laughs> I like that. Over the following months, Kirito and Asuna's relationship become increasingly romantic. In June, Kirito assists Lisbeth, and in thanks, she makes him a second sword, Dark Repulsor. Kirito joins Knights of the Blood on the 20th. At this point, Kirito is comfortable enough to explain his trauma to Asuna. On the 23rd, he kills a member of Laughing Coffin that infiltrated the high ranks of the Knights. Which was Kuradil. Which was Kuradil, by the way. He's an asshole. And then literally that night, he proposes to Asuna. And they soon move in together on the 22nd floor. He's 16 at the time. Which is... <laughs> <laughs> ah, bro. I, like, I get the gamer loneliness, but dear God. <laughs> a week later, they adopt a small lost girl named Yui as their daughter. Too bad she turns out to be a computer program and gets erased two days later. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> this AI program called you Daddy. Ugh. Still, they already love her, and Kirito manages to save a copy of her to his nerve gear because that made sense. On November 7th, the two lovebirds end their honeymoon after their child died and traveled to the 75th. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> On November 7th, the two lovebirds end their honeymoon and travel to the 75th floor with the rest of the guild. Kirito reveals that Heathcliff is Kaiba, forcing Kaiba to put his plan into action early. The two duel, and as Heathcliff is about to deal a fatal blow, Asuna gets in his way. Following Asuna's sacrifice, Kirito wins, ending the death game and freeing all remaining players. All right, for one, I just gotta say, dude, that was so stupid. Like, Asuna jumps, he's like about to stab him. Kirito's already down and out, right? Stab Asuna, she jumps in the way. 
if I'm Heath, I'm like, okay. <laughs> there was, how, how simple would that have been? And then he turned on his hack powers and then he stabbed him back. I was like, what the hell? This made zero sense. Give it a reason. Even if it's a terrible reason, just any reason at this point. Standards aren't high. Unfortunately, that includes the murderers. Kyoba spares Asuna because he feels like it, and with everyone free from SAO, it shuts down, killing Kaiba as it does. At the same time, some players, like Asuna, are intentional. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing because I keep thinking how stupid it is. I'm like, does he come back again? As what? a ghost. Yeah, I'm like, what the f <laughs> Oh, Okay, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm sorry. At the same time, some players, like Asuna, are intentionally diverted to appear in Alfheim instead of waking up. This leaves Asuna trapped in a cage on top of a world tree. Because the one thing you need to do with everyone's favorite female lead in your show is lock her up and have the dude do weird stuff with her in a tree, but we'll get to that. And that's how the Ironcrad arc ends. That was the good one. <clears throat> 2025. In the year 2025, early in January, Kirito's in therapy like most SAO survivors. They all have to reacclimate their bodies. Kirito learns Asuna's real name from Kaiba after defeating him, so he visits her in the hospital. There he meets Nobuyuki Sugo, who, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, is an unrepented piece of garbage and also a literal <laughs> that taunts Kirito by saying he'll marry Asuna. See, Asuna's dad has selected Sugo to be Asuna's suitor, even though Asuna's not having it. Literally, he, she's in a coma, so. Sugo's also Kaiba's rival, and that becomes pretty important later. But for now, he's in charge of a task force run by the Japanese government that's helping SAO victims with their recovery. They're also doing some shadowy work with the military, because why not? A few weeks later, Kirito learns about Alfheim and sees photos of Asuna perched atop the in-game world tree. So it's time for him to dive back into the VR game, not three months after escaping the trauma of SAO. Once in Alfheim, he meets Leafa, a girl whose voice sounds mysteriously similar to Sugaha's. Of course, Kirito doesn't immediately notice. In Alfheim, Kirito meets several people, including the leaders of the various races. Because Kirito's an anime protagonist, he and Leafa quickly end up becoming near legendary figures in the game. Meanwhile, Sugo, who is the fairy king, Oberon, in the game, torments Asuna. And by torment, I mean assaults. By the 22nd, Kirito and Leaf have finally recognized each other. Okay, I get how Kirito didn't pick up on it immediately, but Suga, girl, look at him. Like, come on. Sugaha comes to terms with what Kirito has gone through, and Kirito recognizes how he alienated her through his self-isolation. It's a very heartfelt reunion between siblings. Even though they were, like, doing some weird shit earlier. They were like... No one, so we didn't talk about how she was in love. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they travel to the top of the world tree while avoiding Sugo's goons. Kirito reunites with Asuna and defeats Sugo in the game with some help from Kaiba. See, Kaiba developed a thing called the Seed, non-proprietary software which can control full dive worlds and players. A computerized memory of Kaiba, which is basically a computer ghost of Kaiba, gives the Seed to Kirito because computer ghosts are real. And since Alfheim Online was created using the seed, Kaiba can give Kirito godlike admin powers, which allows him to defeat Sugo once and for all. Later, back in real life, Kirito narrowly avoids getting stabbed by Sugo on his way to the hospital where Asuna is staying. Sugo goes to prison while Alfheim gets temporarily suspended and then sold off. Asuna's father is forced to step down as the head of Rekt, and honestly that seems fair considering everyone just keeps exploiting full dive technology, and Kirito makes the seed open source so anyone who wants to develop for full dive can do so. They really are making him Jesus, huh? Yeah, yeah. In March of 2025, Kirito meets with Rinko Kojiro, Kaiba's former girlfriend, to discuss the late developer. In spite of everything that's happened, Kirito seems to respect him for some reason. In April, the SAO Survivor School opens its doors to students from across the nation. Thanks to the SAO incident, it's been three years since they've been to school, so it's time for them to finish what they started. Around the same time, ALO is officially re-established. It now includes the world of new Ironcrad and other SAO features, like sword skills and player data, all made possible by the seed. Other VR MMO games start cropping up using the same technology, like Gun Gale Online. In May, new Ironcrad officially opens and Kirito's gang, alongside both SAO vets and new players, begin challenging the floors once again. But this time, they don't have to worry about actually dying. Well, at least until the Phantom Bullet arc kicks off. In June, Kyoji Shinkawa meets Shino Asada and introduces her to GGO. You know, the one who shot the bank robber. She starts using the game as a way to deal with her gun phobia. 
In July, Kirito and friends take Yui to go see a whale and fight a kraken. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. What? <laughs> hey, internet child, we're gonna go see a whale and fight a kraken. It's gonna be a great weekend. More importantly, Kirito meets another member of SAO's victim rescue force, Seijiro Kikuoka, who grills him to find out more info about SAO. He then recruits Kirito to help out with yet another VR MMORPG that has turned deadly, GGO. Or Gun Gale Online, for those of you who don't know what GGO means. In August, Karen Kohirumaki, better known as Len, begins to play GGO. Alongside her friend Pito Hui, she quickly becomes a legendary player. Because GGO randomly assigns avatars, her in-game character looks drastically different than her real-life body. This is from the side thing, right? Yeah. Mm. On November 9th, a mysterious mass figure known as Death Gun kills Tomotsu Shigemura, a controversial but well-known figure in the GGO community. The murder happens in-game, so everyone freaks out thinking the Amusphere is not as safe as they thought. After a second killing later in the month, Kikuoka asks Kirito to investigate. Kirito heads into GGO, meets Sinon, and the two become partners. He doesn't know how to use guns, which is kind of a handicap in Gun Gale Online, especially when you're about to take part in the third Bullet of Bullets tournament. So instead, in natural SAO fashion, he picks up a sword. A laser sword. But he doesn't have to worry, Sinon has his back. They're able to bond over how they've both been forced to kill people in self-defense. Death Gun murders another player while the tournament's going on, which is strange. How could he have killed somebody when he's seemingly participating in the tournament? Nonetheless, Kirito and Sinon end up in the final three with the other remaining contestant, Sturban. This guy moves exactly like a member of Laughing Coffin that Kirito once fought, so Kirito uses his knowledge from the first time he trounced him. Kirito and Sinon defeat him, sharing the top spot in the tournament. In the outside world, it turns out Death Gun is run by two former Laughing Coffin members. One of their brothers had been killing people by going to their apartments and giving them lethal injections while they're diving. The IRL murderer is actually Sinon's friend, Kyuji Shinkawa, the one who introduced her to GGO in the first place. Because this is SAO we're talking about, he tries to <laughs> Shino in real life. I hope that isn't taken like a joke when I do that. I just don't, I just wanted to be calm because I'm not trying to get, it's like a really strong word and we're in a workspace right now. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, there's a lot of that in this series and I don't appreciate it. So, uh, please, uh, editor, please keep that in because <laughs> this is actually serious. No, like seriously, like I, I, I'm just trying to keep it down, but people always say, think what I'm saying comes off as a joke. I'm just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but all right, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> Luckily, Kirito stops him. Side note, the brothers get arrested, but the third member of their group goes free. At the end of the arc, Shino meets the rest of Kirito's buddies. She also meets the person she helped save back at the post office incident, which helps her finally make peace with her past. Shortly after Christmas, Kirito and the gang decide to pursue one of ALL's, A I always wanna do AOL online. Shortly after Christmas, Kirito and the gang decide to pursue one of Alfheim Online's mythical items, the legendary sword Excalibur. After Klein saves the goddess Freya from the cage she's trapped in, the heroes fight their way through a litany of Norse gods and monsters. And a lot of, a lot of women trapped in cages in this timeline, guys. Turns out Freya's actually Thor, a pivotal NPC in this Excalibur quest. And when Kirito gets the sword, he completes the quest. You can't tell, this was a side story. I don't even think he uses the sword ever again, does he? By the beginning of 2026, life is fairly peaceful. The Survivor School is working as planned, and Kirito, with Asuna's encouragement, is developing his own VR tech. It's even got a device which allows them to talk to Yui more easily. At this point, Kirito believes the virtual world is as important as the real one, but he recognizes there needs to be a balance. And that, my friends, I think is some character growth. However, Asuna's mother is still putting intense pressure on her to perform up to her family's high standards. And surprise, that doesn't include playing video games, especially not the ones that almost killed her once before. Understandable, if we're being honest. Like for real. That's actually good parenting. To be <laughs> Asuna gets into a duel with Kona Yuki, almost defeating her. After their duel, they become friends and Asuna meets Yuki's guild, the Sleeping Knights. The Saving Knight's goal is to defeat a floor boss and have their names recorded. The guild is made up of players from another MMO, Serene Garden, used exclusively by hospital patients. Many of its members are terminally ill, including Yuki herself. But they don't know that yet. The guild, Asuna and Yuki, with some last minute help from Kirito, fights its way through the 27th, 28th, and 29th floors, achieving their goal and engraving their names in the game forever. 
or at least until its servers go offline someday. Damn it, did we have to put that line in there? <laughs> it's so sad. It is sad, but all right, that's appropriate. I think so. In the meantime, on February 1st, GGO's first squad jam takes place, and Len emerges the victor. On March 29th, Yuki passes away, held by Asuna and surrounded by her friends and many admirers in the game. In April, the second squad jam occurs, and Len takes second place. Around this time, the Augma, an augmented reality technology, becomes incredibly popular, replacing VR for many Alfine players. Asuna is pretty good at its main game, Ordinal Scale, but Kirito sucks because he has no real life strength or agility. And why does it feel so good to say that? Really though, I kind of, I really don't like him anymore. Partly the author's fault for just putting me through this. The device's popular idol, Yuna, is throwing a concert, and Kirito thinks that a certain Tetsuhiro Shigamura is behind Augma. When the concert rolls around, it turns out he's correct. Shigamura's working with a former SAO player to try and revive his daughter, Yuna. She died back in SAO. Dude, really? You don't know how this is? Reincar Reincarnation? Are you, okay. She died back in SAO, so Shigamura tries stealing the memories of her from all the SAO players invited to the event. What? <laughs> That's not how memories work. All right. Ryan, we're almost done. It doesn't work, because that's not how memories work, dog. And Kirito and the crew ends up fighting with what was originally going to be Aincrad's final boss. Oh, that's pretty <clears throat> sick. I kind of like that. That dude, yeah, I like that. Not the dumb idea to resurrect a daughter. It's just, a, we're just doing video games, bruh. Just video games, you can't, I'm bringing someone from the dead. We even get some help from friends from the past, like Yuki. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> this is just falling apart. <laughs> She's dead. What the... Thanks to this, Shigamura's plan fails and Ogma quickly falls out of fashion. And that's where I'm gonna leave off. With Alicization still airing, you can always go and check out the rest for yourself. Because I definitely don't want to hit y'all with no spoilers, because it's actually getting good again. So definitely worth the checking. I'm Kurt. Thanks for watching Game the Robot, your anime watch list. Oh, Edder, I'm so sorry.